engaging the community since 1970. This is WIS Awareness. Good morning and thanks for joining us on Awareness Today. I'm your host, Leland Pinder. Well, later this month, a very profound art exhibit will be coming to the South Carolina State Museum. Now, it's called Requiem for Mother Emmanuel by South Carolina artist Dr. Leo Twiggs, a very well-known artist in this area. The exhibit will be nine paintings by Twiggs created in the aftermath of the Charleston Church shooting in 2015 at Mother Emanuel. It'll be a powerful culmination of Twiggs' life work, as well as a great opportunity for education and programs offered in conjunction with the exhibit by the South Carolina State Museum. So joining me this morning are Jared Glover and Lori Cornegi from the State Museum with more about this exhibit. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. So so first of all, you guys have a whole lot going on around the exhibit, but just give us a brief overview about what this exhibit is. Yeah, and it's it as you said, it's it's a powerful exhibition. Um, it's work that Leo created in the aftermath of the shootings at Mother Emanuel in Charleston, and it this is one of those cases too where the artist was like the perfect match for. Um, a group of works like this because mm -hmm. it, a lot of the symbols and signifiers he's used in his work like the confederate flags and targets mm -hmm. are, are things that show up in this series of pieces and so Leo like everybody was deeply affected by what happened at Mother Emanuel and as an artist this was his way to respond to it so he worked over a period of a year creating these nine batik paintings wow. um, in response and you've been seeing some right now here on your screen. Let's just talk about one of these, Jared. How about this one here? Um, when you look at that, what, what do you see? What can you tell us? I, I think that um, piece in particular is one that we tried to use to help promote the show in itself mm -hmm. um, because it really shows how South Carolina responded to this horrific uh, shooting in Charleston. Mm -hmm. um, not only does do the, the paintings themselves and all nine of them sort of walk you through the, um, the event, um, and the reaction and the coming together of everybody in South Carolina. Um, so that, that specific piece really sort of um, ends the show mm -hmm. and shows you how um, our state came together and uh, really overcame this horrible tragedy. Mm -hmm. and, and a defining and moment for South Carolina. For yeah, me. I was just right. going to add to in, in that final piece that he does, he includes um, lyrics from Lift Every Voice and Sing, mm -hmm. which is well known, thought of as the Black National Anthem. Right. And it, so he really wanted to put this group of works in context to in the larger story sort of of African American struggle mm -hmm. and connect it to a bigger story and an ongoing story, ongoing struggle. And so it's really sort of moving to see those words that resonate with the whole series right. really well. This is uh, very fascinating stuff. Uh, tell us about some of the programs and uh, educational offerings you're going to have in conjunction with the exhibit. Sure. So mm -hmm. on Tuesday nights, um, or select Tuesday nights, excuse me, we will have circles of dialogue. Um, we'll have a professional at the museum um, there to help our guests sort of um, digest some of the images and some of the feelings that they might have um, while experiencing this type of um, exhibit. Um, so we want to be able to provide a space, a safe space for people to be able to share their thoughts and their own experience and um, their own feelings about what happened that horrible mm -hmm. night. Um, so uh, those will happen on Tuesday nights um, once you come see the show. Um, if you see it earlier in that afternoon, you can come back to the museum. Um, I believe they start at 7 o'clock. Okay. Um, um, Actually, it's 6, 6.30. 6 30, yeah, 6.30 mm -hmm. to 8. And another great piece of this program, I think, um, is that we have about 20 people from the community. They're going to come in and get trained to be uh, co-facilitators for it. Okay. So they'll help our Deborah Walker, who's our professional mm -hmm. consultant coming in, who's leading the mm -hmm. discussions. They're going to help with the small group work to really make it, we hope, this wonderful sort of place for the community to discuss these really challenging issues yeah. but that are on kind of everybody's mind I think. As I was looking up just information about this art exhibit Dr. Twiggs and you guys about mm -hmm. this exhibit I noticed I was finding links and stories from all across South Carolina mm -hmm. so is this something I mean it's here going to be here in Columbia but I mm -hmm. imagine you would love to draw folks from all over obviously. Oh absolutely yeah, yeah I mean this is something mm -hmm. that 
would be meaningful for people mm -hmm. from everywhere. And the other program that we're doing too is we, on March 10th, we have a program called Art Day. And that's when we're really going to focus on Dr. Twiggs. He's going to be in for a lecture midday, and we're going to have a performance from the Mother Emanuel Choir and also a local group, Indigo Soul. And so we would love to have people come to that wow. and really experience the show. And hearing from Dr. Twiggs, too, is so eloquent when he talks about his work. Um, and one other thing I just wanted to mention, too, uh, just outside of the gallery where this Requiem for Mother Emanuel will be, we're going to have a few items also from Mother Emanuel Church. Okay. We're going to have a prayer quilt, and this is... Um, Things that were donated after the shooting, you know, people from all over the world mm -hmm. wanted to come, share their condolences and their thoughts and wishes. And so th we think that'll be a nice sort of companion piece to it, too, to set some context for people as well. So with you all being with the museum, of course, your mission and goal is to educate the public. And this um, incident, this situation is something that there's not going to be a point where it's like, okay, we recovered. Right. We have gotten over um, what right. happened in Charleston. So how do you think, of course, you draw folks from all kinds of backgrounds and races, uh, religions, genders, what have you. How do you think this is going to aid that process in continuing that understanding yeah. and recovery of what happened? No, I, I think that's a great point and a great question. And mm -hmm. we're just, we just want to be part of the conversation and it's, it is, it's ongoing. Mm -hmm. And I think having the Circles of Dialogue program was really important to us to mm -hmm. kind of have the show, have the visuals for guests that come in, but also have that opportunity to kind of get together, talk, have a discussion that's going to continue. I mean, this is just one discussion that's of many that have been happening in Columbia, right. as you know. Right. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's an ongoing thing. Right, and you know, we're, we're the state museum, so we sort of have that public trust where we have to tell those stories about South Carolina, no matter how difficult they might be. Mm -hmm. um, so this isn't the first time that we sort of um, looked at uh, an issue similar to this. Um, so we want to be able to provide, like I said before, a safe space for people to come and um, experience, um, you know, you know, our state and mm -hmm. um, our our history, no matter how dark um, it may or may not be. It's, it's all important, the good, bad, and the ugly. It's exactly. all important, and we have to talk about it. Right. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you all for being here. The exhibit's going to come to Columbia at the museum uh, January 27, right. and it'll be here through April. More details on that later in the show. But coming up right now, we're going to let Jared and Lori uh, go, and we're going to bring in uh, someone next that knows Dr. Twiggs very well. We're talking to Frank Martin from South Carolina State University. He's going to offer just some more insight and context to the work of his friend. Injured? We've got a $625,000 settlement for our client who was involved in a head-on collision. Don't be a victim. Call them right now and let Anasta Pulo Law Firm start fighting for you today. So don't scream. Call a team. Just dial all twos. Hi, I'm Andy Stanley. What if there was a New Year's resolution that made you a better person and the world a better place? I think there is, and that's exactly what we're talking about this weekend on Your Move. So the satellite went out last night in the rain in the middle of my show. I've had it. We're switching to Spectrum. Wait, what? Honey? All right. You've got free HD and free primetime on demand. Yeah, right. <laughs> free. <laughs> Yeah, it's free. Get Spectrum TV with superior HD in any weather. Plus thousands of titles free on demand. Just $29.99 a month. Call 844-575-2999. And you get 100 megabit Spectrum internet. 100? Is that even legal? Shouldn't you get ready for work? Get the fastest internet starting speeds for the price. Just $29.99 a month. Plus unlimited nationwide calling with Spectrum Voice. Call 844-575-2999. <laughs> okay, you're all set. A deal, huh? One year contract? <laughs> nope. No contracts. Uh, what happens on Maple Street stays on Maple Street. Hmm. Get Spectrum TV, Internet, and Voice for just $29.99 a month each with no contracts. Call 844-575-2999. 
We're kicking off the new year. Up to $12,000 off at Gattiana Chrysler Jeep. Over 600 new Chryslers and Jeeps available. New Chrysler Pacificas and new Chrysler 300s. Up to $12,000 off. Or lease a new Pacifica for just $269 per month. New Jeep Wranglers up to $6,000 off. Or lease a new Jeep Cherokee for just $199 per month. Start something new event at Gattiana Chrysler Jeep on Greystone. Call 779-7300 or click GattianaSC.com. Welcome back to Awareness This Morning. The artist and man behind Requiem for Mother Emmanuel, Dr. Leo Twiggs, his career spans 60 years, according to a release from the State Museum. This could be one of the most compelling and poignant works of his yet. Within weeks of the shooting, as we learned, Dr. Twiggs began painting these paintings as a means of coping and processing what happened in Charleston. As well as not long after, when South Carolinians came together and brought down the Confederate flag on the grounds of the State House, which the 84-year-old artist says he was absolutely amazed by. Well, concerning Charleston, he says this work was additionally a way to reflect on the aftermath and how people responded to the shooting. Dr. Twiggs is quoted as saying, My paintings are testimonies to the nine who were slain, but I also record another moment, our state's greatest moment, a moment that moved us from tragedy to redemption. For one shining moment, we looked at each other not as different races, but as human beings. Here's Dr. Twiggs in his own words in this short snippet of a video interview that will be included in the exhibit. Charleston is a unique place in the history of African Americans. It is the place where the slave ships brought Africans to this country head to toe like sardines and then docked in Charleston. This is where they began their long and agonizing journey into the night. When these slaves got off the boat and they got into the Christian religion, at the beginning, this was their sanctuary. This was where they began to feel something about Christ and about the deliverance from their daily routine, from the hardships, from the pain. What happened at Mother Emmanuel is not unique to African Americans. It is a part of the journey from which we've come. This is a crisis of multiple meanings. It's redemption, it's slaughter, it's tears, it's all of those things. James Weldon Johnson wrote a poem in 1900 called Lift Every Voice and saying, two verses stand out. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. That is the story of Mother Emmanuel. That is the story of many African Americans, especially in churches. The church is the sanctuary. Sometimes African Americans wear a mask when they're outside. Uh, they smile and they hurt and they cross over things. Uh, but in the church, they could release themselves. And that is why this series has been so important and so difficult to me. Well, right now I'm joined by Frank Martin. He is the acting director of the Steinbeck Museum and Planetarium at South Carolina State University. And you're also the art history instructor there. And you know Dr. Twiggs personally. So I want you to tell us this morning just... When you learned about this exhibit and his paintings, the paintings culminating in the exhibit, what were your thoughts about your friend and his work? Well, I've known Dr. Twiggs since I returned to South Carolina because he's the person who brought me here. I worked with him in the Standback Museum. Mm -hmm. And I understood that he was working on this series. And the way Dr. Twiggs works is he has this sort of empirical discovery process. That is, he often discovers meaning through the process of creating the work of art itself. And when he started out, he had the idea of trying to deal with this tragedy, this terrible loss, but also to deal with the idea of forgiveness and reconciliation because that was how the community responded to this awful event. Mm -hmm. But we remember, too, that the church populace had extended 
themselves to Dylan Roof. When he came to the congregation, they fed him, he prayed with them, and he even said um, that he was almost reluctant to kill the people who were welcoming him. And Dr. Tuig said to me that he thought about that, that he often himself goes to a prayer meeting on Wednesday night, and he thought about what it would be like to be in a situation where someone comes into that community, to that uh, sacred space, with such uh, vile intention, and what that person is motivated by, and then how the community loved and welcomed him, and then the families forgave. So that was, he wanted to look at the healing and the, 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 the narrative that allows the conversation to go on that allows people to go on and that's the kind of person he is. Now you probably, are you familiar with his commemoration series where he deals with the Confederate flag? Have, have you seen those works? I'm not familiar. You're not. Mm-hmm. Well, Dr. Tweeks has often worked with these very complicated and difficult themes and he often works in series. And the commemoration series was about southern identity. Mm-hmm. Uh, he looked at the naval battle jack of the Confederacy and how it's used as a symbol and it's used, it's been associated with the Ku Klux Klan and with white supremacy but many people don't realize that William Porsche Miles, who was a former mayor of Charleston uh, during the period of the Confederate uh, War, actually designed that naval battle jack. And he originally did it as the flag for the Confederate States of America. And it was not accepted, and it was used by the Virginia uh, forces um, as a Virginia battle jack. And then they started to use it as a battle flag because the original, f- the the Confederate flag looked too much like the United States flag. Mm-hmm. So when Dr. Twiggs looks at the complexity of history, because he's an educator and an intellectual and an artist, he works on all these different levels. Wow. Very, more than three-dimensional. I mean, multi-dimensional. Well, he, his, his approach is holistic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you heard him referencing James Wilson Johnson and the Negro National Anthem. I wanted to ask you about that. Mm-hmm. Those words were so poignant and so relatable. And, of course, he made that inference in that video. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, just, how do you think, if that brought it home for me, mm-hmm. so do you think a lot of people will have that same reaction? Well, if you look at the works, like I said, I don't think Dr. Twiggs began with uh, the intention of creating this trajectory of experience. But the first image has a target on the church. Mm -hmm. And in that target is a little inset, like a reliquary. A reliquary is a a place, if you go to European uh, churches, they would often put the bones of saints in the church in a sacred space under the altar. And this was also practiced by African peoples, the Fang of Gabon, made reliquary heads where they would keep ancestral bones and they would have an altar in the home. So he used this idea of a reliquary, and it's a little cross and a brooch, like because remember who was murdered in this situation. Uh, one of the people who was killed was 87 years old. Another was 70 years old. Um, these were people who could not defend themselves. They could not get away. And he wanted to look at this, this horror and to look at the history of Americans of African descent mm-hmm. because of what the legacy of slavery have, has left. Um, but you also have all the things that come out of it, the poetry of, of someone like James Ola Johnson or Langston Hughes, and he's often fed by literature. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, let's pop up the details for you this morning. The exhibit, again, starts on the 27th at the State Museum and runs through the 29th. It is free with your admission into the museum, and I think it will be well attended, and I would highly encourage everyone to check it out if you can. Thanks for being here, Mr. Martin. My pleasure. All right. Coming up here next on Awareness, reaching out to the black community with a message of environmental responsibility and sustainability. Jane Doe has been injured in a car wreck. Your firm's mission? Help Jane get her money faster. Anything is possible with George Seek Injury Lawyers is on the case. Lost wages, medical bills, pain and suffering. Dial nines. All nines. When you are home alone, an emergency can become a tragedy. However, with any of Life Alert's three emergency systems, help can be summoned immediately, whether in the bathroom... I've fallen in the shower. At home... Help! I've fallen and I can't get up. And on the go... Help! I've fallen in the park and I can't get up. Don't worry. Help is on the way. Life Alert saves a life every 11 minutes. 
For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-518-0221. That's 1-800-518-0221. Call now, 1-800-518-0221. For a free brochure, call 1-800-518-0221. What do you love about Bojangles? (laughs) You got a minute? I would say they're Cajun filet biscuit. I love that they just made us breakfast. (laughs) I like it that the biscuits are always fresh. Oh, and they're potato rounds and dirty rice. When you open up the paper and that aroma hits you. Blueberry biscuits, seasoned fries, chicken supremes, Cajun pinto, sweet tea, mashed potatoes, roasted chicken bites. Come in today for three flavorful breakfast biscuit combos for just $4 each. Bojangles, it's bow time. Hey, everyone, we're here asking people who would they call if they're hurt in a car wreck or on the job. If you guys were hurt in a car wreck, who would you call? Oh, nice. nice. The police? Excuse me, sir. That's easy, George. Say injury lawyers. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, you know what to do. Call all nines now. Green messaging in black and, and a black and white society, creating effective dialogue with communities of color. That was the topic of a very great forum and conversation a few days ago in Columbia, hosted by the State Commission on Minority Affairs. Take a listen. These are conversations that we typically haven't had. I believe the community has been given maybe an unfair stereotype that they aren't engaged in the environment or they aren't as environmentally conscious or friendly, and that's really not the case. That's Dr. Tamara Warren, an an adjunct professor at USC and project manager with Whitetail Environmental. She joins me this morning. Thanks for being here. Thank you. And this is also on her uh, side here, Chanel Williams, who works with the Richland County Stormwater Department. Thank you for being here. Uh, Thank you. So let's talk about these issues of being uh, environmentally conscious and um, responsible. Uh, You were saying this is not a conversation or that it appears is not had often in the black community, but that's not true. Yes. Um, In the Columbia area alone, we have multiple African Americans who are environmental experts from myself to Chenille um, and just multiple areas dealing with air, water, waste. And so this isn't typically a perception that you have of African Americans um, as professionals. Mm -hmm. I think there's a stereotype that African Americans aren't interested in the environment, aren't involved, and having a a conversation like this really dispels that myth and bring a different perspective about what environmentalism is and how different diverse communities are involved. So tell us, how is this uh, a good thing and beneficial to the black community to be environmentally conscious and responsible? Um, It's beneficial because African Americans are actually environmentalists. We recycle, we compost, we do a lot of different activities both at home and at work that has an environmental um, spin to it, but sometimes we don't as our, we ourselves don't believe it or we have a misconception and so having this conversation not only dispels the myth for others but just brings a little more awareness to ourselves. Sure and mm-hmm. Chanel this is something that you were saying it's not that we don't do it but perhaps we don't call it what it is and right. it is things we mm-hmm. are doing and have been doing. Right very simple things mm-hmm. we have for a very long time had a very specific perception of what an environmentalist is or mm-hmm. what that looks like And so we want to try to dispel that myth and broaden people's perspectives and definitions, especially when it comes to our kids. You know, you have kids that think, oh, well, I want to go into the sciences, but that's not just for me. Yeah, it is. (laughs) It's for everyone. (laughs) I'm glad you said that. Take a listen to this soundbite from Julia Scott, principal of Dutch Fork Elementary Academy of Environmental Sciences. We're trying to help our students take on the identity of scientists and environmentalists and, and so that they recognize that the actions that they take on a daily basis certainly impact the earth. And so the, the fruit of that has been we have parents who recognize, like, hey, the work that you guys are doing, and it's not only making a difference in the life of my child, but they're also influencing the decisions that we're making in our home. Decisions are making in our home. Yes. It starts, maybe perhaps um, it happens at school, but it starts at home. Yes. Right, just having that um, initial interest and desire to be involved in your environment because your environment is a part of your community and you want to be involved in your community because it affects you and it affects all of us. And real quickly, before we go to break here, this of course is something that uh, all communities really can benefit from, from being in the know and uh, carrying out these practices. Yes. Mm -hmm. Really anyone 
it's good information for anyone. Right? Yes, because yeah. mm -hmm. as Chanel has said, you know, the environment is for everyone. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exclude any demographic or any community. So when we recognize the role that we play, you know, we're benefiting the earth in general. Mm -hmm. All right, awesome. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. you guys. Uh, more awareness here after the break in just a few minutes. Can Bosley regrow your hair? This is my own growing hair that I can comb, cut, style, do whatever I want with. The results I have achieved have been exceptional. This is my real hair. I can do with it whatever I want. This is mine. Bosley gave me my hair back. I cut this hair. I wash this hair. I mess this hair up if I want to mess this hair up. I can't explain to you the way that it made me feel to be able to wear my hair down, go out on a date, and have confidence again. Can Bosley regrow your hair? This is my hair. This is my hair. Call or go online for your free, no-obligation self-evaluation kit. Plus, call in the next six minutes, and we'll even send you this $250 gift certificate. The information is free, so choose to grow back your own real hair. Choose Bosley. Call now. Did you know that a dirty CPAP system can make you sick? If you knew what could be growing in your mask and hose, it would keep you up at night. <gasps> now SoClean.com has released the world's first and only automated hands-free CPAP cleaner and sanitizer. With its patented design, SoClean is fast, effective, and hands-free, killing 99.9% .9 of all CPAP germs. Try SoClean now through this special TV offer free for 30 days. Just call 800-563-1602. My health has improved. It's simple to use, and I'm not worried about infections. SoClean works on all CPAP machines and popular masks, destroying CPAP bacteria, viruses, and germs without the daily hassle of washing your system by hand. Just place your mask in, close the lid, and in just minutes, voila, sanitized and ready to use. Try SoClean risk-free for 30 days. This is a limited-time offer. Call now, 800-563-1602, or visit SoClean.com today. Welcome back. We have to mention that January 15th marks what would have been Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s 89th birthday. It's also, of course, the day when Americans take time to celebrate his important life's work and achievements as a civil rights leader and champion for racial equality. Benedict College President Dr. Rosalind Clark Artis will be the keynote speaker at the City of Columbia's MLK celebration at the MLK Park and Community Center on Green Street. Before that, there will be a wreath-laying ceremony at the historic MLK marker at the corner of Green and Hardin Streets in Five Points. USC also celebrating Dr. King throughout the week with a number of events. The well-attended annual MLK Day breakfast will take place on the 19th in the zone at williams Bryce Stadium at 7.30 a.m. Of course, our thanks to Dr. King and other freedom fighters like him from the past and today who truly believe in justice and equality for all. Thanks for watching this morning. Have a great rest of your day.